What's going on guys, Bradley Martin here. And uh, today, I wanna talk about something very important in your life, for the rest of your life, and forever in your life. And it's not sweeping the floor, even though this is exactly what it looks like. It's a broomstick. This is a utility broomstick, but that's not the point. The point is this exercise, the thing I wanna teach you, the thing I wanna show you, that um, at one point in my life, I kinda did it every single day. And ever since, I've continued to do it no matter what body part I was working, whether it be chest, back, shoulders, legs, anything. Um, and it's called, and I've talked about this before in other videos, but I want to just bring it straight to you because I really urge you guys to try this because it's going to make you feel better. It's going to alleviate some pains you may be having. Um, and I think it's very important. So it's a broomstick, as I know it, a broomstick dislocation. Like, a, even though you're not going to rip your shoulder out, don't worry. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like first, and I'm gonna explain a little bit more about it. So, it looks like this. Do you have to use a broomstick? Uh, no. You can also use a PVC pipe. Should I use that for now? Yeah. Okay. I just want to use this because you could use a broomstick. Like, this is... You can use anything, fine. Right? You can use anything. You just need to use something that's like, uh... Uh, long and... What about long? a hockey stick? Huh? What about a hockey okay. stick? You can use a hockey stick if, as long as it's long enough. So some people got obviously dependent on your wingspan, and that's one of the things when it comes to doing the exercise. I'll show you one more time, right? Right. This this you can tell is pretty easy for me, or it's called like a, a pass through, right? Now what you guys are gonna do is you're gonna find a placement on the bar where you're able to keep your elbows long, because initially it was I did this for Olympic weightlifting. The the idea was like to have a good range of motion through like the snatch, to be able to like catch it and be stable and to be like solid here, right? But the reason why, I'm gonna get more into this in a second, the reason why it's super effective at like helping you with the bench, helping you with the squat is because like a lot of those positions, not the bench in particular, I'll explain that one later, but the squat and everything is still like, you're still in this position. So I did a video with, with Klokov like, how, how many a weeks month? ago, like three a weeks month. ago? No bro, like a month ago? A month and a half? Like a month and a half ago, and he showed this exercise, uh, the hyperextension and like doing it in a certain manner to like almost train as if you're gonna do the movement because that's what's gonna help you get better at the movement right that's your goal now this in my opinion helps with more than just each movement it helps with like your shoulder health your shoulder stability your body's ability to like have a better range of motion have better mobility so what you're gonna do is you're gonna set up a way where your elbows can be nice and long right all the way out, like all the way extended nice and long. Now, when you do the pass through, you wanna be able to go up and over your head without raising your shoulders, right? And at the same time, you wanna be able to do it without bending your elbows, okay? So you want it to look like this, right? Ideally, you don't want to, you don't wanna like move your body around while you're doing it. You wanna just stay nice and straight and keep your shoulders down. So. Kevin's question about can you use a broomstick? Yeah, or you use a, a, a hockey puck? Or not a hockey puck, a hockey stick? Yeah, as long as you're able to get the right range of motion. So for everyone it's different because your arm lengths are different. Now, some people are gonna have to start really far out to be able to do the pass through without bending their elbows or raising their uh, shoulders. So that's fine, right? Start wherever you can, but the goal is to get further and further in, right? Because the further I go in, the harder it is, right? And for me, this is where I'll feel, more, I'll feel more of an actual stretch in my pec, in my shoulder, and my bicep, right? So, for me, it's probably about right here, where I can do it. Actually, I don't know, let me go a little further. Oh, ooh, ooh, almost took the camera out. So right there is good, where I feel like a real good stretch. But I'm able to keep my elbows locked, so I'm not doing this, right? I'm able to keep my elbows, my shoulders down. And what I'll do, before I kind of get into the benefits of it, I'll do it every day, like no matter what my workout is, sometimes even if I'm not working out, I'll just grab a broomstick in my house, and I'll do like 25 to 100 pass-throughs. So front to back to front is one. Okay, so if you're doing 25, it's one, two, right? So I suggest starting out with just doing it 25 times. The thing that you will notice right away, you're gonna get a pump in your chest right here. You're gonna get a pump in your shoulder. 
you're gonna feel looser in your in like your upper back and your shoulders. But right away, for the guys chasing a pump, I promise you, you do this 2,500 times, you'll feel a pump in your chest, guarantee it. And if you don't, money back guarantee. Which is no money because you didn't pay any money it's to see free. this video. It's free, you just watched an ad. Now, so the benefits of this, right? Picture, picture yourself doing a bench press, okay? A lot of people can't get into the proper, because I know the bench, everyone wants a big chest, right? But if we want a big chest, we gotta be able to bench the most amount of weight. But picture yourself trying to get into the proper position for a bench press, and your, sh your upper back, or, your, sh or your, your chest, and your shoulders are too tight. So if your chest and your shoulders are too tight, a lot of times it's gonna be hard for you to get into the position of like, having your shoulder blades retracted. Right, now I've talked a lot in the past about being able to like, squeeze a pencil in the middle of your back while you're doing the bench press. It's gonna put you in a position that's gonna put most of the pressure, right? Imagine your upper back nice and tight like this. To my upper back, right? Tight versus like a lot of people bench like this. There's no tightness in their upper back, therefore there's no like platform for them to press off of. And also, it increases your range of motion when you're, when you're like this. Because you have to press further from here and it's gonna put more tension on your shoulder, right? Versus like, you're able to pull, retract your scapulas all the way back like you're squeezing a pencil, like nice and flat. Then your range of motion decreases because you go from here to here. But your range of motion is gonna decrease, therefore, it's a little trick, a little tip, a little power lifter tip. You're gonna be able to bench more weight because you don't have to push the weight as far, period, right? Besides all the other things like the shoulder health and all the other stuff this is gonna give you, so. But check this out, another thing to think of. Let's say, because I said in the bench press, for example, because again, we want the big chest. If your chest and your shoulders are too tight, you're not gonna be able to get into that position. So this is gonna help you loosen up your chest and your shoulders so that you can get into a good position to get a bigger bench press, to have a stronger bench press. Not only like from the range of motion standpoint in the front, but have a flat surface for you to press off of so that you're nice and stable throughout the bench press so that you can get a bigger chest. So you guys see this and it's like, oh yeah, it's just some stupid stuff where, you know, I'm, he's doing like this, right? And, oh, that's silly. But the benefits you get from it are much more than just like throwing the bar in front and back behind, right? Like I said, try it 25 times, like literally the first time, 25 times, you'll feel a pump in your chest and your shoulders. Like if you just did that for like 25 times, like four sets, you'd be like, oh, what the, like what did I do? I got a pump, right? Now, what does that mean? Not only do you have a pump and you feel good and then you look better, right? This is important, right? But what does that mean? That's blood flow. And if that's blood flow, that's a good thing, right? Because sometimes people have shoulder injuries, sometimes people have, like whether it be the front or the, the front, whether it be in the front or the back. The point is, if there's blood flow to there, to these areas, right, that a lot of people don't have good mobility or good blood flow because they're, they don't, they're not able to like contract certain muscles in their upper back, which was, was a problem of mine for a long time. But doing this has helped me. So what does blood flow mean? It means if you have injuries, like I'm saying, you're able to mend them faster. You're able to, get better, right? Depending on what the injury is, obviously, I don't know exactly what your injury is if you have one, so I can't be like, hey, this is exactly what you need to do, that's all you need to do, because it may not be true, but I am, I'm definitely speaking from a uh, experience standpoint where I've noticed if I had not done it for like a few weeks, I would notice how much tighter my chest is, how much harder it is for me to get in a good range of motion, like for the bench press, to have like a, a stable base, and I noticed just in my workouts when I warm up with this, for like a chest press, when I'm doing bench press, I feel everything, everything feels better. I'm able to contract my, my triceps better, I'm able to press better, I'm my, everything feels better versus like, sometimes you bench press, you're like, man, my shoulders feels tight or my chest just feels tight. This is gonna help loosen it up, put blood flow not only here, get you a pump, put blood flow back here, which a lot of people don't get at all, and it's gonna make you overall better at those exercises. Now, when it comes to like the squat and all these other things, it's the same thing, you're in a squat, your, your stronger positions are gonna be like with a tight upper back, right? Like I told you, I did that video with Kokoff like about a month and a half ago. Same thing he was explaining in this exercise, like I said earlier, is like your ability to have decent range of motion, have good range of motion here and not like, right? It's also gonna, uh, like, because that's, that's, if you're super tight here, right, your chest and your shoulder, you're not gonna be able to set up real tight here. You're gonna likely gonna have to like do one of these. Like a lot of people have to do this because their shoulders like get numb or something, right? Like you're here and you're like, oh my shoulder gets numb or my wrist gets numb and I gotta like hold it like this, or I gotta hold it like this, or I gotta go like this. Now, if you have good mobility here in your, in your shoulders and your chest, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to get and like set up tight under a squat so that you don't have to like, you don't have to do this or figure out where you're gonna go here. So that you're gonna be better at the squatting. 
all right? Because you're gonna be have a more sturdy, like, upper half. So you don't have to compensate and do stuff up here, and then your body has to compensate and do stuff down here to make you more efficient. You're just more efficient. So, again, I'm talking about one thing that I've done for forever since I started Olympic weightlifting years and years ago, and one thing I will always continue to do because I just I explain how it helps you on the bench and it helps you on a squat. Two completely like different exercises that are not this, but and it gets you a pump. But it's, this is gonna help you get better at those things. And ultimately, what's, what are those things gonna help you get better at? Lifting, at getting bigger legs, at getting stronger, more explosive hips, better, better chest, better arms. You bench more, you're gonna get bigger triceps, you're gonna get a bigger chest, you're gonna get bigger shoulders. Like, so there's little things like this that people really neglect and don't think about because they're like, that's not, this is not me getting a pump and getting a bigger arm. Or this is not me uh, doing chest flies and getting a pump and getting a bigger chest. But you gotta understand, in this game, bodybuilding and like just being athletic, it's all about the overall balance about what you're doing. Being able to like, to be a great athlete or to be a great bodybuilder, it's never just like, I just bang this one thing, you know, unless you're super genetically gifted and you don't, you, don't, you know, your shoulders just go crazy and then all you gotta do is focus on your, whatever, right? It's, but that's, what percent of the population is that? Like, very small, okay? I don't know the exact percent because I've never done the research, but it's small. Most people, you need to find balance in what you're doing in order to be the best version of yourself. And that's what this is all about. So I hope you guys enjoy the tip. If you guys want more videos like this, give it a thumbs up. Uh, I'll talk about more things that I've done, like for years, I'll talk about things that I think are super effective at helping you get better. Cause at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. I love you guys. I'm out. Uh, I mean, not, I'm still gonna be in here and work out, but yeah, that's it. Subscribe, make sure you turn the bell notification on. If you like videos like this, more coming soon.